These Covenant kids are warming up for dance practice, getting ready for a big recital in the spring. They're identical twins, and the matching outfits just makes things a little more confusing. Well, a lot of people get us mixed up. Like, when we go into a new grade, we have different teachers, and then it takes them a while to get to know our names. The girls meet at the studio once a week, three hours of practice to get ready for four different dance and gymnastic routines. First, before we do a dance, we stretch and practice. I really like a ballet dance that we're doing because it has a lot of the motion and pointed toes and spinning. Michaela says it's best to make mistakes in practice so they don't happen with an audience. Madison agrees that the recital can be stressful. Yeah, but sometimes it gets nervous on stage, but it's mostly just fun because you get to be in front of a lot of people and just dance. The girl's mom knows a little bit about stress. It all happened 10 years ago when she showed up at Covenant's birthing center. We lived there for four months. <laughs> I can still remember it as clear as day. I don't think I'll ever forget. Um, there's certain portions that I'd like to, uh, but <laughs> they're still quite clear, um, even though 10 years later. Crystal spent three months of her pregnancy at Covenant after her labor started only 21 weeks into her pregnancy. Once I hit the hospital, I was in until the remainder. Luckily, the doctors were able to kind of slow it down, and I held off till 31 weeks. Doctors soon found out the twins were developing in a precarious way. Mono-mono twins, they're monochorionic, monoamniotic, meaning there is no membranous tissue between the two children within their uh, um, in utero. So there was direct contact uh, with the, each other and where they could very easily have a cord wrapped or he, they, either one could reach out and grab the cord. And so at any given moment, that could occur and which would warrant an emergent delivery. And so allowing her to go home was a little bit more of a risk than most of us willing to take. So she was there on bed rest for weeks. The time apart was difficult for the young family. Very stressful, but you know, the staff there too were very helpful in keeping us relaxed and, and uh, monitored close. So. Crystal had to deal with hospital life for weeks on end, but the 45% survival rate of the Mono Mono twins was kept from her until the end. I didn't want to know, the doctors asked me, and my husband went and found out, and I didn't want to stress during the pregnancy, so I didn't know until like a week before I delivered. <laughs> Matthew is a nurse practitioner, and he says his knowledge of medicine did help in his understanding of the situation. I think it did help in some aspects for sure, but uh, as a new father too, you can't help but get a lot of that, uh, those jitters and you, a lot of that clinical experience goes away uh, with a lot of that anxiety too. And so I found myself asking the same traditional questions that any new father would. It's not hard to imagine that doctors, nurses, nutritionists, and housekeeping all became members of the family during Crystal's stay. Even the cleaning lady bought me clothes for the babies and I had my birthday in there so the staff got me a cake and <laughs> yeah so it was it was nice and the girls spent their first Easter in the NICU and they had the Easter bunny come and <laughs> when the twins were born they were three pounds apiece they were rushed upstairs to the neonatal unit so they could be monitored as they grew they were there a month yeah, which isn't bad for as early as they were, but I had a lot of shots like to help develop their lungs since I was in the hospital that whole time. So that kind of helped out a little bit. My one did end up with some asthma problems, you know, after her being preemies. And so we're in and out of the hospital into the PEDS unit as well. The staff at Covenant became a second family to the Shapeners. The doctors and the staff were amazing. They were all great. The Nikki was great. I remember there were some older ladies that used to make hats for the little babies in there, and so that was a great touch. The staff up there did great. They allowed you to come in direct physical contact with the babies, uh, and they guided you through every little insecurities you've had, and it helped you feel pretty comfortable. The girls quickly gained weight and were soon like any other newborn, but they just didn't seem like twins. Even when they were born, actually being identical, one came out with really white blonde hair and the other one came out with like brown hair, blonde highlights. So I was like, are you sure they're identical? <laughs> they assured me they were. 
Um, but no, their personalities have always been different. <laughs> a decade later, and the girls love doing most of the same things. Well, I like to do sports and mostly just play with my sister. We like to play on the trampoline outside. We like to play inside. We like to play board games. Mostly just a lot of things. Yeah, they do enjoy a lot of the same hobbies and of course all the same toys, which causes fights. <laughs> they are twins, but they are both their own individual. Um, you know, and what one has more tendency to do, the other one will then switch a few months later, and now the other one has more tendency to do so. So they do go back and forth. I guess they share that as being twins, but um, they both have their own certain personalities. And ironically, one does tend to take a little more after me, and the other one takes a little bit more after their mother. So <laughs> it's funny how that turned out. Weeks of training make sure every move is in sync to the music. They love their instructors. <laughs> She's a good teacher. I like her. They love dance, you know, and I actually love watching them more than <laughs> I told them they can't quit because I like watching them, you know. Uh, but dance, they love doing dance. They've been doing it for years. Um, they have a lot of great friends doing dance, and, uh, you know, it's, I like seeing them grow um, with uh, the physically, um, also uh, psychologically as well, and I think it helps to nourish their development uh, and, and team teamwork and team spirit together. Man, every time I watch, I like tear up every time. <laughs> I am, if the girls ever end up doing, I mean, man, I'm a basket case. <laughs> they make me cry every time I watch them. Crystal admits that some of the earlier recitals were a bit comical as well. Their first one, they were little ducks. Oh my God, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a long time ago, but yeah, I still remember that. And as hard as this training looks, it's nothing compared to their time at school. We're in fourth grade right now. <laughs> well, it's probably the hardest grade I'd say so far. Well, I, I'm not liking, I don't really like science in fourth grade. And math is getting harder too. The girls look forward to summer vacation. Family vacations now are spectacular. We have so much fun. We um, last year took them zip lining. We went whitewater rafting. We've been hiking to waterfalls. My favorite so far was probably going to Tennessee, going to the roller coaster park. It's interesting that Michaela likes roller coasters because that's how her parents described their life before the kids were born. It's been a roller coaster for sure. Uh, rough start with any premature children and with their um, medical issues um, that we've kind of rolled with the punches and they, they really made remarkable recoveries with things. Now today we've really came together into this close-knit family and we do everything together. Together is the key word because these twins say having someone exactly the same age is magical. Well then I always have someone to play with all the time instead of playing by myself and someone to support me 